Welcome back to Springfield, Missouri, site of the 32nd Annual Christian Homeschool Basketball National Championships. Scott Staten and Jeremy Caldwell, our second game back-to-back -to -back together. Uh, we just saw the MHEA Eagles, the three-time defending undisputed national champs, win their pool, won both of their games today. And uh, now we're getting ready for a game that both of these teams would really need to win um, to be able to have a, a shot to continue to do what they want. Now, they'll both be able to play again tomorrow. Uh, but right now, it's going to be the number one seed in this pool, the HHBA Lightning out of Virginia. They were the winners of the Midwest uh, Regional, taking on the uh, PT Warriors out of Texas, Parker Tarrant. They are 29-8 on the year and uh, came in as a three seed, uh, but a very dangerous three seed in the pool play. And uh, right now, they are trying to get on here and, Continue to get on a roll because I start off this national tournament last year coming off some great success. And so they're coming into some uncharted territory for this squad because they expected some big things this year, Jeremy. And tonight could be that first big step towards that. Yeah, it's a, a big matchup here. The uh, Lightning come in as the number one seed in this pool. And uh, PT's coming in as a three. So uh, PT's one and oh. And the uh, Lightning is 0-1. So if PT wins this pool, they, I mean wins this game, they win the pool. If uh, Lightning win this pool, this game, it would be a three-way tie. Oh, wow. And we'll have to go to point differential. And uh, that will be some math calculations that we'll uh, look into in the fourth quarter if we oh, get to man. that point. I'm, get, I'm getting some horrible reminders of last year. We played a, a girls game where – one team was winning, but they weren't winning by enough. And right. so the other team was celebrating losing by only 10 points instead of 11 or right. something like that. So we may have to uh, get some updates uh, if it gets to that point in this game so that we can uh, – my math's not that quick, so I'm not going to be able to add that up for you. But getting started here, it's uh, PT Warriors there in the purple with the yellow trim. And it looks like North Carolina out there, but it's not. It's HHBA Lightning at the white and the powder blue. Then on the drive – to get things started, that's number 13. Alex Hale. Alex Hale with the bucket. Two to nothing, PT Warriors with the early lead. And I believe if uh, if you look at the brackets, I believe the point differentials have been noted so far. So uh, if you want to take a look at that, you can probably kind of tell how much your team needs to win by and win in order to advance. So, uh, But still, there'll be some type of calculations that need to be done, I'm sure. Well, that play right there gives you an idea how the HHBA wants to play. Had a, a shot wide open. It was number 24, Chris Campbell, right in front of the rim, but he wanted to kick it out, and that's why three-point shot falls for Jackson. HHBA. That was Jackson Lockard. We saw him connect in his first game. Wasn't enough as his team was beaten in a what is a pool seating upset as another outside shot this time. It's another bucket for Alex Hale. He's got the first five points of the game for his squad, and they lead 5-3. Yeah, and if you're uh, the HHBA Lightning, you know, your scouting report is you gotta, you got to control Toby Pike and David Aguilar, and then Alex Hale comes out and has the first five points. Locker drives and kick out to uh, Liam Velker, and that's what they were missing, the consistency in that first game. But, boy, when they can hit from outside, it looks like they're they're going to be content to do that, to drive, but always look outside for that perimeter shot. Meanwhile, inside, PT Warriors get the ball, and that's a foul down low. I believe that's going to be on Jackson Lockard, number two. That's his first foul of this game. That's going to send Isaac Aguilar to the free throw line, shooting two. And, uh, you know, PT come out. Five quick points, and you look at the scoreboard, and they're down 6-0 because of the three-point shooting from uh, the Lightning as he knocks down the first free throw to tie the game at six. Second shot is up, and it's good. 7-6, one-point lead early on here, first quarter. Boys 18U Division I Pool C. Second game for both teams. Both teams really need this win. Yeah, we're uh, barely two minutes into this game. We've had three lead changes already. Working the ball around the Lightning. That time it was Liam Velker, and he shook off the outside shot and drove it and did an up-and-under move and got that one to fall. It's 8-7. Now his team back in the lead. A couple of lead changes early. Pike gives it over to Hale. 
There's Pike in the middle from the free throw line. He gets his first shot to drop. And his team back out in front, 9-8. Swapping leads here. Yeah, Toby Pike's got a really good post-move mid-range shot because he shoots at the peak of his uh, release. And uh, it's hard to, hard to guard that and block it with the height that he has. Lightning working the ball around. They'll look for the three. There from the corner, there's another three. That's off the front of the rim. Joseph Wilson can't get it to go. Rebound to Pike. Pike pushes it up ahead. Gets it to Timothy Jones. Far corner. That is Hale for three. No good. Battle for the boards. Andrew Symes with it. Gives it to Pike. Pike, pump fake. Drives to his left. Over in the corner. Ball was tipped away, but Warriors come away with it again. Cross-court path. That pass goes... Inside to Pike, who his jumper is short. Rebound comes off to the Lightning. Lightning going the other way. Trailing by one, and there's Velker again. He's connected on two of those already. 11-9 now. Back out in front, the HHBA Lightning. Outside shot falling early for these guys. And they need that to be able to come away with an opportunity for a win here. That time on the jumper, Isaac Aguilar, he gets his first two points from the field, his fourth of the game, and we're all knotted up at 11. Yeah, so far in this game, we're seeing great offensive uh, play basketball by both teams. Uh, both teams shooting a pretty high percentage right now. So uh, second game of the day for both teams. They're used to the this goal now, and uh, it's kind of showing off here. Very deliberate action. You can tell that they are well coached and know exactly what they want to do. That time, once again, Liam Velker, he decided to pass up the three and drove the lane. Couldn't get that one to, to go, but they do get the rebound. Another opportunity here for the Lightning. There's a three, rolls around and around. He got every inch of iron there. Jackson Lockard makes his second three of the game. That's the fourth already in this first quarter for the Lightning, and they're up 14-11. Yeah, and I believe they made uh, 16 threes, I believe, earlier. In the, uh, in the game. Boy, on the drive, Aguilar had a wide open look there as he got right to the bucket, but dropped it short. But lucky for him, he had a teammate right in front, be able to pull down the rebound, and another foul. And looked like they might have put up a two if that's on Lockard. That's his second. Yeah, they can't afford him to get in foul trouble for sure. First shot is up and good by Andrew Symes. He gets into the scorebook. 14-12, Lightning out of Virginia, Midwest region champs. They lost their first game today, trying to pull this one out. Second shot was short, rebound to the Lightning. Here they come on the attack. And if you hadn't heard much about uh, the HHBA Lightning, you can uh, look on YouTube. They have uh, one of the, the game-winning shot for the Midwest went viral and it has over 1,000 views before the – National tournament started. Great give and go there. Yeah, and like you just talked about that, that was Noah Bailey, but uh, that shot was created by a great pass and ended up getting a wide open look for Chris Campbell as the buzzer went off, and that's how they claimed their first Midwest region title. Back at the other end, Aguilar with a pretty kiss off the glass. He's got six, and it is 16 to 14. And both teams continue the offensive onslaught here because both teams are – not missing very often. Velker that time caught a slashing Bailey underneath, but he backs it out. Thought about the three up top. Wilson, though, gives it over to Locker. Locker drives, scoops it up. On the other side of the bucket was Nolan Bailey, and he gets his second score of the game. It's 18-14, four-point lead for the Lightning early on here. Just under two minutes left in this first period. Second game of the day for these two. Not against each other, but in pool play, and there's a steal. That time it was Chris Campbell. Yeah, it's good weak side help coming on the back side there to get that steal as they were trying to post up uh, Toby Pike. Velker feeds it to Bailey inside. He decides after seeing Pike behind him to think otherwise about putting up a shot. Give it back to him. Works it on the perimeter. Velker thought about it, but a quick closeout. Uh, by number 21, Timothy Jones for the Warriors. Ball tipped away. There down low is Nolan Bailey. He can't get it to go with the left hand, but he will be at the free throw line with an opportunity to pick up two there. That's Toby Pike foul, and Leo's going to the free throw line. But Leo's doing a really good job of penetrating to the middle 
pulling Toby Pike out from the goal and then finding Nolan Bailey on the weak side, unable to finish the uh, complete the free throw there, but he's getting some putbacks because of the Liam's offensive threat. Yeah, definitely the, the size advantage going to the Warriors, but there have been second chance opportunities as Bailey sinks the second. He's got five on the game, and the lead is five for his HHBA Lightning team. Warriors on the attack in the purple. Out of Parker Tarrant, Texas. That time looked like a, he, he might have held his pivot foot there, but Mitchell Morgan drug it there on the uh, end. He got too much momentum going to his right, stopped and wanted to go to his left. The official right there on top of it and calls him for the turnover. It'll go back to the Lightning. Minute to go, five-point lead for the Lightning. They have the ball, chance to build on that lead. Rez have been pretty consistent on that travel call today. Seen several of them for sure. Here's Velker, three. Quick trigger, can't get it to go. Pike rips down the rebound. Coming the other way, Aguilar for the PT Warriors. Goes left, or right, goes left, comes back. Guarded closely by Velker. Going to work it around and reset. Into the corner. Andrew Symes back out top to Pike. Into the corner with Hale. Hale goes to his left. Pike trying to set up down on the block. Can't do it, so Hale drives all the way in. Nice jumper, but it rolls off the far side of the rim. And then quickly the other way, here comes Bailey with the left hand. Beat Pike down the floor. Bailey's got seven points on the day. 21-14, seven seconds to go. Winding down this first period. Here's a deep three by Aguilar off the right side of the rim. And it comes off harmlessly. And that's the way we'll end the first quarter. It is the top seed in this pool trying to win their first game of the day, the HHBA Lightning. They lead the PT Warriors 21-14. We'll be back with second period action shortly. Welcome back, second quarter action. Boys 18U Division I Pool C, the HHBA Lightning, number one seed. They lost earlier in the day, but they've got a 21 to 14 lead over the PT Warriors. Warriors in purple and gold, Scott Staten alongside Jeremy Caldwell, second quarter of action. And I don't know what happened there. They came uh, immediately onto the court and within 10 seconds, the head coach for the Lightning wanted a timeout to be able to talk over whatever was going on. Didn't see anything there, Jeremy. I didn't either. I guess he, he seen the defense that PT was in, and he recognized something that he wants to run offensively. So he called a quick timeout to make sure they're aware of it. We said that earlier. If you got him, use him. So that's what he's done. Quick timeout, first 10 seconds into this one with the ball. And it's got to be interesting how they come out of this timeout, what happens. Yeah, you call one that quick on the offensive side, you better score. The Lightning rebounding pretty well. They... Had a tough game in their first one. Weren't able to pull out the victory, but right now they have a lead that they're trying to hold on to, and we'll see if they'll be able to do that. If you're uh, KC Metro, whether you're in here watching or sitting at the house, you're probably rooting for the Lightning to win this game, hoping it can go through a three-way tie. KC uh, Metro lost earlier to PT Warriors, but then came back and beat HHBA. And there's a turnover on the pass inside and unable to hang on to the ball, so it comes back the other way. 
Not even 30 seconds into this second quarter. It's a seven-point lead for the Lightning in white. Powder blue trim. Warriors in the purple out of Texas. They work the ball around the three-point line. It goes. There's Pike. Stops and jumps from about 12 feet. No good. Rebound comes off to Chris Campbell and then a touch foul there. That one's going to be on Symes, I believe. First foul of the quarter. And the Lightning will bring it inbounds in the opposite basket. We've uh, only had four fouls so far in the whole game in a little over a quarter. So that's uh, pretty good not having that many fouls. So. Playing pretty clean and, and also uh, letting some of the physical play go. Nothing, you know, that looks like it shouldn't necessarily be called, but uh, it's been a good, good called game. There's a three. Velker, that's his third one of the game. And, boy, we, we said that. When you see Velker and Lockard hitting those three-pointers and you start to see that that shot is on, you got to be worried if you're the Warriors. There's a steal. Lockard rips the ball away from Pike. Here comes Velker with it. He was cut off by Hale, but they continue to make the attack. Velker double teamed. Goes to his dribble to his left. Looking for some help. Cross court path. There's Lockard. Thought about it, but Pike closed out on him. He dribbles. Velker from the left side. Got another one. That's his fourth three pointer. Sixth of the game already. And just like that, the lead is 13 points for the HHBA Lightning. Jeremy, those were the shots that weren't falling right. earlier in the day when they played KC. Yeah, when they played KC Metro, Lockard and uh, Velker were struggling in the first half to find their three as they only hit three threes in the first half. Came out in the second half and hit eight. Fin finished with 11 for the game, but... They, you got to think they started a little too late finding the rhythm. So now that they've had one game under their belt, they uh, looks like they're a little used to the rims here. And uh, they've started out hot this game. As Like you said, Velker's already got four threes, and uh, he's got 14 points here, and we're uh, 620 left in the second quarter. And when you when you run it back and think about it, if the last three and a half quarters of play, not even three and a half, a three and a, and a fourth quarters of play, they've got 14 three-pointers. And so right. you, they found their groove, and that is not good news for the Warriors. But if you're the Lightning, this is why they won the Midwest. This is why they came in as a one seed in this pool, is that when their shot is on, they are right. deadly. Yeah, well, they also uh, – Jackson Lockard also has two threes this game. So already they have six threes in this game alone and 11 in the first one. So 17 threes and a little over a game and a – and a quarter, that's, uh, that's winning ba basketball. Yeah, that's respectable in any league. Got a whistle and going to be a foul on the Lightning. That foul is going to be on Nolan Bailey, his first foul. As, uh, you know, he's got the duty of trying to match up with Toby Pike in the paint. So far, holding his own. Warriors work it around. There it's inside to Pike. Bailey tries to get him. No, he's harassed. That was a double team there. Ridenauer couldn't get the ball, but he did knock it away. Still in the hands of the Warriors. Mitchell Morgan over the right side to Timothy Jones. Jones got it to Hale. Hale with the ball dribbling to his left. Picked up by Aguilar. The PT's doing a good job of sending help on the weak side. There's Pike. He oh. went up and was bothered by Bailey. He's going to try to go up again. Bailey challenges him again, gets another board, puts it in. He was relentless on the offensive boards there, and it resulted in two points down low, 27-16, 11-point lead. Pike doesn't quit. The motor does not stop once he's in that paint and has the ball. Bailey did an honorable job trying to guard him, but... And then a, a hand check out there. That foul is going to be on Timothy Jones. Timothy Jones picking up the foul. Did not see that one, but the official did. It was right in front of him, and so it'll be another inbounds from the side. For the Lightning. Lightning with the ball. Here's Valker. Already hit three threes or four threes this first half. With so lots more to go. Looking at the brackets, if uh, if the Lightning win this game by 10 or more, they win the pull outright. Velker in and out, but the rebound pulled down by Ridenauer. Velker again. <laughs> Too strong that time. They both looked online. Warriors dodged a bullet there twice. Here comes Aguilar. 
to his right on the drive. Cut off by two players, and Velker with the block out of bounds. It will stay at this end. So right now, the Lightning are up 11, 27 to 16. Plenty of basketball left to play if we got two and a half quarters. There's a three. They finally get an answer. That time it's Alex Hale. That's his second three of the game. He's got eight points. Lead under double digits now for the first time in just a bit. 27-19. Yeah, the biggest takeaway so far in this first quarter and a half is Toby Pike only has four points. It's been all outside, even the Warriors connecting on a couple of threes. Here's Lockard again, rattles out. Pike pulls down the strong rebound. Quickly the other way, Aguilar. Stops at the elbow. Little 10-footer is good. Nice little mid-range pull up there. Knew, knowing he didn't have the numbers to take it all the way to the basket, so he just stopped and popped from mid-range, and that's a almost a law start in today's basketball. 13-point lead, cut all the way down to six, but on the three-point attempt, Velker on the closeout is fouled. He'll get three shots at the free throw line. That's a... Tough job defensively when they double down to the to the corner guy and left Liam open at the top. You uh, that usually spells disaster if you're a PT. And uh, luckily they didn't come away with a four point play there. He knocks down the first free throw. First shot's good. Three from the line or three from the three point line. It's all the same. Second's good. And that's the, that was the first foul on Alex Hale. So nobody really in foul trouble. Jackson Lockard really the only one with two fouls. Third shot by Velker is good. And Jeremy, is a, I know, as a coach, it, it always drives me crazy when you got players that can drill three-pointers and can't hit free throws. But Velker is not one of them. He does both. Right. Yeah, he's got 17 points here out of the 30 points for the Lightning. So he definitely came ready to play in this game and was not trying to wait till the second half to get going. Here's a three outside from the Warriors, and that time it was Mitchell Morgan who gets one to drop. That's their second three of the quarter, third of the game. And when the Warriors can't seem to get anything going down low, they have taken it outside, and they've connected down a couple. 30-24, to 24, the lead is six, 307. Velker again for three. That one's too strong to the right. Pike comes down with the board. Aguilar the other way for the Warriors. Trying to cut into the six-point lead. They've cut the lead in a half of the Lightning and a chance to keep chipping away at that one. Here comes Hale. Stops. Reverses it. Pike with the ball. Going to try to work on Bailey. Pump fake. Puts it up the floater, rolls off the right side, and the rebound comes off to Chris Campbell. That's a good job defensively by Bailey to just stand his ground and make Toby shoot over him yep. and uh, not give him a wide open shot and an and one. Here's another three. That one's long. He was way behind the line over on the one of the logos on the side there in front of the Warriors bench. Yeah, this uh, – this Lightning team shoots a lot of threes, and that's going to be the third foul on Jackson Lockard. They, well, they definitely can't afford to have him go out of the game for any length of time. And the coach is going to leave him out there on the floor. Three fouls here with two minutes to go in the first half. He's got to be careful. Pike puts up a jump shot from outside that is too long. Back the other way is Lockard. Lockard already connected on a couple of threes. Velker's hit for himself, but last couple have not been on the mark. And so the Warriors have been able to cut into that lead. Always looking for that shot outside. Velker again, too strong. He's hey. missed his last three now. Yeah, he was hot early. He just uh, hasn't been able to find the rhythm in the last couple possessions. Looks a little bit winded. Having to play a lot of minutes today on both games. Here's another shot outside from Mitchell Morgan, and he gets it to fall. And we got a three-point game. Morgan with his second connection from outside. That is the fourth of the game. And now it's the PT Warriors trying to play the one-up game, answering the lightning with their own weapon. Lockard for three. That's his third of the game. 
Haven't heard from him in a while. Lead back up to six, one minute to go, second quarter. In this boys 18U Division I Pool C play, both teams with a loss, or rather both teams need a win, and it could end up in a three-way tie, or if there's a, right, a victory by the Warriors, they could win this pool. There's the steal, turnover, here comes Velker. His, his uh, layup is no good, but there to clean up the board is Nolan Bailey. Boy, he's having a solid game right now. Nine points and playing some great defense on Pike. Pike the All-American with so many stats. That time Aguilar goes in, can't get the floater to drop, and then on the reach in, he fouls Lockard. Another foul on him on Aguilar on their team, and that's going to put them at four, so they're one away, but only 25 seconds left in this quarter. Every time the Warriors make a little run, it seems like the Lightning are either able to connect from outside or they get some hustle work inside by Bailey. Right now, just three players for the Lightning have scored, Lockard, Bailey, and Velker. Yeah, I believe uh, Bailey is going to sleep really well tonight <laughs> after the two games he's had in the battle of the bigs, and then he's got to finish off his night against Toby Pike. Trying to set up one last shot here. Lockard, three, got it. His fourth of the game. Two seconds. Here's a half-court shot put up and off the front of the rim. Cannot get it to go, Timothy Jones, and that's the way things will end. On the strength of all of those three-pointers, eight in the first half, it is the HHBA Lightning leading the PT Warriors 38-27. We've got halftime, and then we'll be back with the second half to see who pulls out in this Pool C action as the winner. When my body needs relief, I real time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real time pain relief. Its soothing lotion is rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout. When my body needs relief, I real time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real time pain relief. Its soothing lotion is rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout.
Welcome back. Exciting boys. 18U Division I Pool C action where the HHBA Lightning on the strength of eight three-pointers in the first half. They have a lead of 38-27 over the PT Warriors. Scott Staten alongside Jeremy Caldwell at this Christian Home School Basketball National Championships. And this is pool play. And really that first half, Jeremy, it was, I guess you could sum it up in a couple of things. They have been able to limit Toby Pike, the All-American, and they've been able to connect on outside shots. Yeah, Toby Pike only has four points there in the first half. And uh, the Lightning have eight three-pointers. Great fake by Aguilar, but could not convert. And all eight of them are between two players. Yeah, just three players have scored for the Lightning, but it hasn't stopped them from building a lead. No, Nolan Bailey, who's done just yeoman's work down low and stopping Pike, but it hasn't stopped him from – sometimes you see that where a player has to spend so much on defense. Right. Uh, but he's, he's getting into the game and scoring points. He's just about in double digits himself. Yeah, he's got nine points. There's a jump shot by Chris Campbell that's no good, but he gets his own board. Back across to the deadly Lockard. Lockard stuck in the paint behind Pike. He gets it over to the corner to Campbell, who sinks a three. The hero from the Midwest gets his first points of the game. The ninth three-pointer now for the Lightning in this one. Yeah, if I'm PT, I'm going to make sure I try to drive and uh, penetrate on Jackson Lockard because he's got three fouls already. If you can get his fourth foul and get him out of the game, He's kind of the, the head monster of that offense. And uh, that time Pike could not get the one-handed turnaround jumper to go. Bailey once again with some solid defense and a great find inside for Bailey for two. Nolan Bailey ran down to the post, got under the basket, beat Toby Pike down the floor, and Toby just lost him. It's, it's amazing to see the job that he's doing. Just really a great job on defense. That time the shot by Hale was too strong. Locker comes off with it for the Lightning, and they'll bring it the other way. Their lead is 16. Here's another three. No good that time. A little bit short. Would have been the fourth different player to hit a three, but Wilson couldn't get it to go, and Warriors with a chance to cut into that 16-point lead. Aguilar went up, but he had the ball knocked away. Lockard has it. Here they come, going quickly the other way in transition. Lockard over to the right side. Pump fake. Wilson back out top. They're going to work it around. Thought about it. He's going to do it. He's going to miss it, though. Lockard that time was a little bit short. It rolled across the basket and into the hands of the Warriors. 5.53 to go. The lead is 16 right now for the Lightning out of Virginia. The PT Warriors out of Texas. Yeah, he uh, thought about that three a little too long in a corner. On the drive. Oh, what a shot. That time that was Timothy Jones, and he kind of cuffed the ball onto his wrist, took the uh, uh, defensive physical play there, bounced off of the contact, and was able to get it to go off the backboard. Crazy shot. But they needed that one, 43-29, and I a believe, chance to cut more off of that lead. I believe that foul was on number 21, Timothy Jones. I mean, uh, Joseph Wilson for HHBA, Timothy Jones with the finish. And he gets the free throw to make it a three-point play, lead down to 13. Some pressure now, trying to trap a little bit out towards the half-court line. They back it off. Got to watch those corners because you got him over there. And Velker with another three-pointer. And, boy, they are just hitting everything. Ten threes already in this game. Well, and that's not even counting, Jeremy, that Velker got fouled on a three and hit all three, three free throws. So, right. really, if you throw that in there, these guys are on fire right now. Yeah, and it's, uh, it, it, it's kind of funny and, and – uh, Amazed at the same time that they keep leaving Liam open on the three-point line on the wing. I don't know how he keeps getting lost in the defense from PT, but uh, if I'm PT, like I have to know where Liam is because yeah, he's already hit five threes on you, and uh, you you can't afford to leave him open anymore in this game because you're down 16. So you're gonna have to go to a kind of a matchup man defense and. Uh, Maybe a triangle and two, but I don't know who you're going to double off of. <laughs> right. If you if you cut off the two shooters and Nolan Bailey down low has been uh, 
been really having his way, and Toby Pike really hasn't had a factor in his game offensively or defensively because all they're shooting is outside shots. Yeah, and then you also throw in a Campbell just connected on his first. They have so many many players they can go to and say, take the shot. You're, you got a green light. Uh, but it's been that last play where they got that three – you could just tell these guys have played together a while because they knew right where to go, the ball motion. He knew how to get over in that corner, and then his pump fake, as the defender went by, he set up, eyed the spot, and put it in. And these guys are uh, they're dead-eye shooters from outside, and when they are hitting, we did not see it as much. It did, it did come in spurts in the second half of their first game, but at that point they didn't have enough time to come back, and now it's been the full the whole game here. We're seeing the full array of the outside shooting that they possess. 46-30, 5-17 to go. PT Warriors with the ball. They need a run here. Yeah, Pike. This is a different uh, different PT game than what we watched earlier today. Alex Hale muscles one in. He had the defender right on him, but he's able to still put that in and make it go. Yeah, so it looks like PT changed their offensive mindset a little bit, and they're going to try to post up Jackson Lockard and see if they can get his fourth foul. And uh, but. Off the miss, but they still come down. Another second chance. Those second chance opportunities, you cannot give those up with a team that can shoot. But that time, instead of staying outside, Lockard drove in the lane and could not stop. He gets called for the turnover on the travel. 14-point lead, Warriors desperately trying to find a way to cut into that, and then there's a steal, the pass right into the hands of Lockard. Another turnover for the Warriors. Once again, the lightning ball. They lead it by 14. Ten three-pointers they've connected on in this game alone. Lightning are doing a really good job of moving the ball. That time a good drive by Chris Campbell, but his jumper falls short. He was too close. Yeah, he must, he must have been. <laughs> he was looking for that three-point line. Warriors. And Lockard battling, and that's going to be a foul on Lockard. If our numbers are right, I think that's his fourth according to us, but apparent, maybe it's three according to the scorekeeper there. They've got a different set than we do, a set uh, of uh, fouls than we do. I guess so. It looks like she just told the coach that's his third, so we must have missed one somewhere. Tough to see sometimes where we are when the official puts his fingers up. It's facing away from us, and we're behind the officials. So here's a three-point attempt outside by Symes, and he can't get it to go, but the putback, and finally Pike able to get something going. He grabs the offensive board, puts it back in off the glass, draws the foul. Maybe that will get him going now. I believe that foul was on uh, Nolan Bailey, correct? Look like that that was on Bailey. That would be his second. That, unless we gave that we know of. <laughs> unless we gave him one of his fouls to uh Lockard. Free throw's good. He completes the three-point play. Let's see if that gets Pike gets uh, Pike on a little bit of a roll. And then a turnover. Stepped on the line, I think, when he threw it in. The well, official right there. I believe the uh, the player was out of bounds already with the ball, and then the other player was coming in, but he hadn't established possession out of bounds when he caught it. Meanwhile, the Warriors try to go in and take advantage. Aguilar can't get it to go quickly the other way. Here comes Lockard all the way up off the front of the rim. No good. At battle for the rebound. Aguilar tries to save it, but they say his foot was on the line, and it's going to stay down at this end. If you're PT, you got to get consecutive stops here in this third quarter. You really need to cut this deficit to uh, eight or nine if you can going into the fourth. Oh, that time Bailey was out top, and he, he cuts behind the defense. And Velker, rather than shoot it, finds Bailey again. He's having quite a game, 13 yeah. points. He scored that over Toby Pike, who was right there with him. And even though Pike just had a three-point play, that was off of a miss. It was not a set play, and boy, Bailey's just giving him all kinds of trouble. But that time, Pike goes in, muscles it in, and he draws another foul. A chance for a second straight three-point play, and he's really seemed to get the motor going now. I believe that foul is on 21, Joseph Wilson. And uh, looks like 
PT has made an assertive effort to start going into the post. You know, they come out early in the third trying to go into uh, Alex Hill as he was posting up Lockard. But uh, since then, Toby Pike has uh, tried to go inside and see if he can take over the game. If they've cut it to 10 points here. He's got a couple three-pointers, but uh, the old-fashioned style with the and ones. And that lead is down to 10. It was just at 16. Let's see if the Lightning can answer. Lockard cannot get the layup to go. A little too strong off the backboard. He had a good drive down the right side of the lane, but once again, cannot convert. Here come the Warriors. Once again, they're trying to go into the post with Pike. Well, he's battling down there, trying to seal off Bailey. Bailey trying to cut off the pass in the front, deny the inbounds pass or the uh, entry pass. So far doing a good job. Here's a three-point shot. Too strong by Hale. Rebound to the Lightning. Light. Warriors can't get impatient there. They can't find Pike. They didn't just put up shots. Right. Yeah, we're only in the third quarter. Got to hold another quarter to go. There's not a 10-point shot. Velker for three. No good. A little bit of contact, but no foul. Back the other way come the Warriors. 10-point lead for the Lightning in white. PT Warriors in the purple with yellow trim. Third period here, pool play. Here's Pike. His jumper no good, just really struggling to get anything to fall other than some rebounds and a couple of in close. But, boy, you'd expect him to be able to hit some of those as he normally does, but not tonight so far. And Aguilar and Pike, even though they're playing games, not anywhere near their averages. Right. Great job defensively by the Lightning out of Virginia. Yeah, the Lightning are doing a really good job of sending weak side help when – when Toby's posting up. That time Velker took it inside. He got around his defender, but Pike was right there to block it out of bounds. 106 to go. They'll bring it in under their own bu bucket. Oh man, Lockard thought about it. He was there. Here's Velker in that cor same corner. Another three. I don't know how you can let him be loose at all. There's gotta be somebody in his hip pocket that it don't matter where the ball is. You gotta, you gotta see 33. Yeah. The whole time. Six three-pointers he's connected on, plus he was fouled on a three-pointer and hit all three free throws. So, in essence, seven. He is having a game. Inside is Aguilar. He averages 18 a game, but he can't get it to fall. Have not heard from him in this second half. Yeah, that's the third person that PT has tried to post up here in this third quarter and uh, just can't get anything going in the post. Well, we knew about their offensive prowess with the threes, but I am really impressed with their defense right now. Aguilar staying all over Lockard. Lockard's going to drive in, bounce pass. Another three outside. This time it is Wilson. He gets it to go. Fifth different person to hit a three, or fourth different rather, and then a shot falls off. Boy, you could see the frustration there, Jeremy. As Hale was walking off, he turned around after Wilson hit that three and just put his hands on his head like, what are we supposed to do? We guard one guy and the next guy hits a three, and that's the way this quarter will end. We head to the fourth, a 16-point lead for the HHBA Lightning over the PT Warriors. Back with the final quarter of action after this. Welcome back. Final quarter of action here. 18U, Division I Pool C, HHBA Lightning. Out to a 54-38 lead on the strength of three-point plays. They have been hitting everything behind the arc, and they have put a great defensive stop on the All-Americans, Pike and Aguilar, for the PT Warriors. Lightning with the ball. Here's another three. That one's no good. Can't get it to go, Campbell. P PT had it to 10. And then they give up two threes. All the way to the glass. 
Aguilar puts it in, first point to the second half for him. He's got 10 on the game. That's right. his uh, first point since the second quarter. Uh, if they're going to get back in this game, they're going to need to get him going along with Toby Pike. Lockert's hit four threes himself. That time he loses the ball out of bounds. Good defensive pressure by Aguilar. So if you're a PT, you got two stops and one possession offensively that you scored on, so you're getting what you want. Oh, I don't know how Velker got away with that. He went through the pick on Pike, stole the ball, a little bit of contact. He wanted a foul there, but Warriors get it back. Here's Pike over on the block. His shot is short, but he gets his own rebound. Harassed down low on the ground. Struggle for the ball. It's going to be a jump ball. It will stay down at this end. Boy, Pike, they are just, as soon as he gets the ball anywhere near the block, he has got Bailey on his back. He usually gets a guard that drops down, and he has right. struggled to be able to get anything open. Yeah, he's got a... He's got to recognize that, that double coming from the weak side and keep the ball high. Another steal. And then get it over uh, cross court. And then Bailey hustles down the court, gets behind the defender, puts it up. Too strong. He was challenged by Pike, but a great defensive play by both in, on both ends. First by Bailey and Velker, and then by Pike. And here they come the other way. Aguilar to the goal. And he puts it in. That's his second straight drive for Bucket. His fourth point of this half. 12th of the game. Open up this fourth quarter on a 4-0 run by Isaac Aguilar. You can tell they've ramped up that intensity on the defensive end, trying to make something happen in this one. They've already won once today, and then there's a travel. That defensive pressure causing some havoc. Yeah, so the Lightning has come in here in the fourth quarter, and they've had four empty possessions, two turnovers, and two missed shots. PT's converted on both of their offensive possessions. That's one way to get back in the game. You got to get stops, but you got to score when you have the ball. Aguilar going to back it out, kind of being deliberate here. 5.50 to go. There's still plenty of time, but they trail by 12. It's been all Warriors, though, in this quarter. They were down 16. They've cut it to 12. Aguilar had two straight drives, and that time on the drive, he gets the whistle. It's going to be a shooting foul, I believe, on... Liam, that's his first foul of the game. Which is hard to believe as involved as he's been in this, and they're going to give him two shots. They said it was on the shot, so Aguilar will be at the free throw line for two. Chance to cut this lead down to 10 if he can hit on both of these. Aguilar, the All-American, 18 points, three, almost four rebounds a game as he hits the first for his 13th point in this one. Really started to heat up here this quarter. We hadn't heard from him since the second quarter. He makes his free throw. They get it back down to 10. And uh, he's got to keep. He misses that free throw. Misses the second. Bailey with another rebound for the Lightning. And then we got a whistle and a timeout. So coach of the Lightning wants to talk it over. And uh, we'll talk about it here, Jeremy. Right now it's uh, still an 11-point lead. You pretty much haven't done anything this quarter, but your lead is still in double digits. Right. Right now, it does seem like the Warriors have ramped up their defense. If you are the Lightning, do you continue to look for the three-pointers or maybe try to catch them hawking around the three-point line and maybe look for some, some dishes down low and get some easy buckets? Well, I don't think there's going to be too many easy buckets down yeah. low because uh, PT's just camping out Toby Pike in the middle of the paint. Right, right. And uh, that's probably the reason, one of the reasons why the Lightning has 12 threes in this game so far. That's 12 made threes. They've shot plenty more than that. But, I mean, it just looks like their offensive sets are just three-point shots. And uh, if they're making them, they're hard to beat. And uh, the first game, they struggled from the three-point line. Even though they hit 11, they hit eight of them in the second half. So the first half kind of cost them. But they've come out in this game, and uh, they've caught fire. And they've, I mean, four different players have hit threes in this game. And uh, so if you're PT, like, who are you going to double off of? Like, because they're all hitting. But the one thing, if I'm PT, I'm going to make sure 33 is not, not within uh, <laughs> more than three feet of a defender because I can't let him get back hot again. Absolutely. Because he's hit two threes in every quarter so far. And that, that's what seems to break their will is every time they make a run, it seems like the lightning will, like a lightning strike, get two or three three-pointers, and then all of a sudden that lead that you would cut into is right back up where it was. Here comes the lightning on the attack. Again, being pressured, Aguilar on Lockard. Lockard brings it across the timeline. Five and a half to go. Velker 
I'm sorry, that was actually uh, Hale that was on uh, Lockard. It is, it is Aguilar that was on Velker. Velker, oh, he's left open at the top, but he's short on that one. But guess who's there? Bailey again, and when he tried to pass it, Pike knocked it out of his hand. Velker comes down with it. Velker with the drive. Going to kick it back out and restart. Here's a three by Joseph Wilson. They're travel. Going to call a travel. He took steps before he took the shot. And that's a turnover, a costly one, because they were able to get a couple of yep. second chances there and didn't even, wasn't able to get a shot off without the turnover. And once again, Lightning ends their possession with a turnover here in the fourth quarter. That's about four straight possessions that they've turned the ball over. And PT has scored on all of them. And they score again. On, on the drive, back. Mitchell Morgan. Boy, they've had some success this quarter. Rather than try to shoot it outside and match what the Lightning are doing, they've just taken it straight to the glass. So they've cut the lead down to nine. They've got it in single digits. Still 442 to go. And if you're PT, you got to continue doing what you're doing defensively because they're uh, not letting Liam get free on a three-point line. Here's another three from the corner. This time Campbell. His is long. Battle for the board. Pike comes away with it. Strong they've, rebound. They've taken seven points off the lead and chance to get it down to seven or even six if they were to hit a three. Picked by Pike. Aguilar can't get open. Works it around to Jones. Hale back to Jones. Here's Hale in the corner. He puts up a three. In and out. But the rebound, nobody gets it. Hits the floor. Aguilar comes over and grabs it. Stops at the free throw line. Boy, they're looking for threes if it's open. Yeah, and you got to take them if you're open. Looks like, too, they pulled Pike out where he's more at the top of the key. And Wow, a spin move by Aguilar. He has really caught fire this quarter. Seventh point in this final period, and the lead is down to seven. Yeah, he's he's really caught fire and got into a rhythm here. That time Lockard got all the way down in front of the basket, but he turned around to pass it, and when he did, Aguilar reached around him, and he is called for the foul. That's, I believe, his second. It'll be an inbounds underneath the basket. 3.38 to go. The Lightning clinging to a seven-point lead. Warriors desperately trying to come back on the inbounds. Oh, he had Bailey open, but Pike recovered with the block. Yeah, it's good recovery because Bailey was wide open on that layup, but his uh, relief was a little slow and uh, gave P Toby time to recover on that. They feed Pike on the block. He goes up, gets the foul, and puts it in. That's what you expect your All-Americans to do. It's a five-point game now. This could be his third three-point play of the half. Yeah, you his, can tell uh, he's fired up. His two possessions here in the third quarter, he scored with and ones, and he comes back with hopefully another one here if he can knock this down. Puts it in. He's converted on all three. So they've cut it down to four. They've come out in this third quarter on a 12-0 run. They beat the press, bring it down. 3-10 to go, four-point game. It was at 16 not too long ago, but they've gotten cold from outside and unable to find their shot. The Lightning working it around with the lead. The Warriors frantically trying to get it back. They've cut a 16-point lead down to four. You know that Bailey had to think about it because Pike was there again. Locker takes it all the way. Beautiful dish. Pike with the block, but they're going to count that one. They're going to call goaltending and count those two. Boy, he was right there again. Yep. He stopped Bailey even from taking a shot because he had thought about what happened before it looked like. But then on that time, on the beautiful pass, able to get on the, uh, the two points on the goaltending and the lead back up to six, 2.42 to go. Here comes Hale. Hale, he loses the ball, but they're going to call him on the foul. And Velker even uh, acknowledges that he reached in and grabbed rather than let Hale go all the way in and have a free bucket. Alex Hale will be at the free throw line. Nope. nope, actually he won't. It was on the floor. They called it before he went up for the shot on the drive. Neither team in the bonus yet. Warriors feed Pike. Takes it into the paint. Stiff arms are just a little bit short, and I don't know how he missed that one. And then on the rebound, there's going to be a whistle and a foul on the Warriors. Yeah, Toby reached in after the missed shot there. I mean, he had the position in the post move, just kind of short on it, like you said. He was right there. He thought about it too much. It looked like... When a shooter, rather than just shoot in the rhythm, stops and kind of looks a little too long. Well, here come the Lightning, leading at 56 to 50. They have the ball, 2.20 to go. Warriors 
have furiously come back. Cut 10 points off the lead. Here's Lockard. Thought about a layup, but he saw Pike's hand there. Kicks it back out. They'll work it around. 2.09 to go. So we Bailey. said we kind of we kind of keep you informed on the point differential needed. We got two minutes to go here. In order for HHBA to win this pool, they need to win this game and win by 10 or more. <laughs> right now it's at six. Unreal. KC Metro fans got to be rooting for the Warriors to either come back or at least keep it under 10. Not sure that the Lightning know that they got to win by 10 to win this pool. Ball Not knocked sure. away by Pike. Oh, almost knocked away and stolen again. Great hands, 130. Here's a three. Too long. Pike comes down with the board. Six-point game, a minute and a half to go. Here comes Aguilar for the PT Warriors. Here's a three. Puts it up. No good. And off the top of the backboard, that's going to come back the other way. They had a good look there. Timothy Jones, but couldn't get it to fall. Jeremy, and that was right what you wanted. That would have cut the lead in half. Yeah. Oh, and there's a turnover. They don't let it go out of bounds. Take it up and another score. It's down to four. Yeah, I've seen uh, Liam called a cramp there. It's going to be a timeout. Liam Liam is cramping, and so is Lockard, and uh, you think that's going to affect their shot ability because both of them are cramping with their legs. You know, this being the second game of the day, and they've put up a lot of threes which you have to use your legs at, and they uh, run a fast tempo offense. And uh, this last minute and 13, you got to wonder if Crampin's going to yeah. going to creep back in. It's a four point game. You would think PT is probably going to press the ball and see if they can get a turnover, but they're probably going to have to start fouling here uh, shortly because limit the possessions. <laughs> if you're HHBA, you have a four point lead. You really can't afford to take bad shots and give more possessions to PT because they've kind of been on a roll here in this fourth quarter as HHBA has only scored two points and PT has scored 12. Yeah, the pressure from the Warriors there caused that turnover. And rather than let it sail out of bounds, Aguilar wisely grabbed it and just drove inside. And he, he's got nine points in this quarter alone. He's really turned it on here. And that defensive pressure has caused some turnovers and turned into points. But do they have enough time? They're up, they're down four rather with 113 to go. Lightning, meanwhile, during the timeout. I don't know if you saw that, Jeremy, but Velker and Lockard pretty much were just trying to work on their cramps on their calf muscles. Right. And uh, trying to spray things down and just get it where they can actually finish this game out and get a win. But as you mentioned, right now, a win is not enough to win this pool. They got to win by 10 points. Right. According to what we can tell. And then on the inbounds, Velker sealed his man and he was quickly fouled by Mitchell Morgan. And looking at, looking at the foul count, PT has at least one more foul to give before they send him to the free throw line. Your legs have so much to do with free throws, and we saw the cramps. That could also come into play. Oh, on the inbounds, Velker goes all the way in, challenges Pike. Pike, though, able to get in there, but knocked out of bounds. And boy, it looked like it went off the hands of Pike, but they say no. The official says it went off of the hands of the Lightning. And with 107 to go, it's a four-point game. A little bit of a trap by the Lightning. Seemed to have catch the Warriors off guard. They get it over the timeline. Aguilar being trapped over on the far side. He gives a cross-court pass to Hale. Hale dishes it down low, and that is Symes with the shot. 50 seconds left. It's a two-point game, and we get a timeout. Boy, a turn of events there. Looked like the Lightning were going to have a chance to be able to, to get a, another shot down there, but they said the ball went out of bounds off of their player, even though the players really thought that it, it was not off of their the lightning. Right. It was tough to see. I mean, from our angle, it looked that way, but the official was right there, and she said no. It came off of the lightning, and it's a Warriors ball, and they come down and convert. you got to give them credit. It was a 16-point lead just minutes ago, Jeremy, yeah. and they have stormed back. And it's it's mainly been on defense causing turnovers, blocking shots, and then coming down to the other end and converting when they had to. Right, yeah. PT really has got in a rhythm here in the fourth quarter, and they defensively have stepped up. And uh, PT has anchored that defense in the middle, and uh, he's – deflected quite a few shots and altered a few others. So uh, offensively, Aguilar has tried to take over this fourth quarter and will his team to a win. They're down by two after being down 16. On the inbounds, there's a trap on the side. 
He gets it over to Campbell. Campbell over the timeline on their side of the court now. Fake the shot. Wilson. Here's another three. It bounces, and there's Pike with the rebound. Velker couldn't get it to go. They've got a chance to tie or take the lead. 32 seconds and a quick foul by Velker. That's only the fourth. And you got to wonder why Velker fouled right there because they, they have the lead, but you got to wonder. The coach knows they got to win by 11 or 10. 31.6 to go. Also made them reset for an inbound so they can set up their defense and Sure, that came yeah. into play. And so a timeout by the Warriors. Well, here's the reset. It's 56-54. There's four fouls right now on the Lightning. So the next foul they commit will put the Warriors player at the free throw line with two shots because of the rule change this year in Missouri. It's always two shots after the limit. It's no longer a plus one uh, with the penalty. And then on the other side, just three fouls committed by the Warriors. So they got a, uh, one that they can give. But it's a two-point lead. You either go for the tie here or you go for the win. I, I don't know if either the Warriors or the Lightning are aware of the point differential, but if you're PT and you're looking at that, is that also, Jeremy, and I know it's quick math, does that mean they win the the uh, the pool or does KC Metro win the pool depending on how that, that turns out? I believe if it's uh, because PT beat KC Metro by – I think more than what the deficit is here. I think even if PT loses this game right now, I think PT will advance. But if they win the game, they win outright and move to the number one seed. But in order for HHBA to take the number one seed and move to the Fleet 16 automatically, they have to have a miraculous uh, flurry of threes, which is not <laughs> impossible from them, but they yep. need to win by 10. Here we go on the inbounds. You got to wonder if their coaches know that. And there's a foul, and maybe so, because that foul's going to put him on the free throw line, I do believe. That's going to be the fourth foul for Liam because he, he's taken the last two. But if you're PT Warriors, you know, you want to win and you want to go to the next round being 2-0. and Yeah, and if you're watching and you're a basketball junkie, this would not make a ton of sense, except you're realizing, and he did miss the free throw, but you're realizing – it isn't just a win here. They are going to have to try to come down and score some quick three-pointers, which, as you said, they can do it. Right. Second shot is good. One Morgan point game. Morgan missed the first. One point game. 28 to go. But again, it's pool play. And they really have to win by 10 points. And then there's a foul. That's just the fourth. So they'll have to bring it in from the sideline at the end of their bench. 56-55, one-point game. We've got a timeout by Virginia. The Lightning, they're going to talk it over. We had this same scenario last year at Nationals over at Evangel with the uh, Indy, Wildcat, Indy Lady Wildcats and the Fort Bend Eagles where I don't believe either team knew the, the, the essence of that game until late in the fourth quarter yeah. when Fort Bend knew that all they had to do was – lose by no more than nine points yeah and even though they lost they would advance so uh you you seen them start stalling even though they were losing yeah they stalled the ball and kept possessions away from indy wildcats and even though they lost they advanced and uh you're you're seeing that here as uh hhba is starting to foul because they need possessions to get this back to a 10-point lead, but uh, I don't know if there's enough time to do that. Yeah, and, and at this point, do you just take the, the go for the win because you're not – the likelihood of you getting a nine more points onto your lead right. right now is not very good. And at least you could come away with the win because right. unlike last year, now this their, their season's not – I mean, their, their uh, travels here in the tournament are not over because they'll still get a chance tomorrow right. to get in a play-in game and try to win that way. So. Correct. Yeah, so – the winner or loser of this game is not eliminated. Uh, if PT wins outright, then they will definitely advance to the Sweet 16. And if they win or if they lose by less than nine, then uh, I believe PT still advances to the next round of Sweet 16. And uh, HHBA is not eliminated, but they will have to play a play-in game tomorrow morning. So they've called another timeout, and uh... – Maybe this is just also to <laughs> let them get a little bit of their legs back. They've been struggling with cramps and uh, trying to figure out how can we get 
some quick three-pointers up here. And talk out that strategy. Maybe hit a three, immediately foul. Hope that they don't hit free throws. Come down, hit another three, foul quick. That's about the only way is you got to hope for some misses on their part on PT Warriors at free throws. And you got to make some crazy threes here in this last 24.2 seconds. Right. And if you're HHBA right now, you got to think that uh, if you win this game, then you could still get the two seed in this pool and only have to play a three seed from another pool. But if you lose this game, then you're going to finish the three seed in the pool and have to play a two seed from another pool. So you got to think of that. There's a lot of scenarios right now as a coach. And, uh, you know, if, if I'm the coach of HHBA and we have possession, I'm going to try to hold on and just take the win and take the two seed because at this point there's no way you can win the one. You're not going to score ten points and. 20 seconds. Right. So hold on, get the win, and you still take the two seed, and it makes your road a little bit easier in the morning that you have to play a three seed. Right. Although some of the three seeds in this tournament, as you see, PT is a three seed, are not no easy feat. So he's going to take a five-second call and give PT the ball, which this is very interesting because it uh, looks like they're trying to give the game to PT. And I don't know why you would just give them a turnover right uh, there. Unless they have are, I mean, and they could be much quicker than me for sure on math. Maybe they like the matchup of who they would play. I don't know. I'm not sure because, uh, you know, if you lose this game as your HHBA, you're going to finish 0-2 in the pool and you're going to finish third place. So you're going to play a two, a two seed, which I'm not sure <laughs> who that is tomorrow morning. I'd have to... Uh, Pool play is, I mean, I love it, but, man, it you almost need to have a team mathematician to be able to, like, figure out all of these points. What happens if they, maybe is that what they're hoping for, a tie to go to overtime and then try to win it by 10? I mean, that's the only other thing I can think of. Better hope he misses his free throw. He hits it. So now they're down seconds. one. Down one after leading by 16, trying to figure out this whole pool play thing, and I believe they're just trying to figure out a way that they can – Get this to overtime so they can try to win by 10. There's another foul. That's Jackson Lockard's first bucket since the second quarter. And I believe that's going to be his fourth or fifth foul of the game. Now, if my theory is correct, Jeremy, what's yep. going to happen here is if they don't hit both free throws, if they just hit one, then the Lightning will just let the clock run out if they can. Right. So that they end Take up, it to overtime. Yeah, and then they can try to win by 10. And with the way they shoot threes, it could happen. They can hit four threes in four minutes. Yeah. First shot's good, so we're tied. And what they're hoping for here is a foul. I got to tell you, though, I'm impressed with the way they thought this out. Their best bet is to go to overtime to try to get a 10-point win. Second shot rattles in. Yeah, this is a interesting strategy here by both teams. As you know, they all know it's pool play, and they probably have people on their bench trying to figure out scenarios right now as we speak. And uh, the different timeouts are probably discussing the different scenarios that are at stake. Crazy. Well, I remember last year and I, uh, the game that we were cut, we were actually at, and the uh, Indy Wildcats girls hit a three right at the buzzer, but it, it, it was a one-point difference. Uh, in what they needed to be able to advance. And even though they won the game because of the way the pool play fell, they were not able to move on. Now, this year, all the teams have a chance, and that's that's the good news. Right, but right now, what's going through the heads of, of the Warriors and what's going through the heads of the Lightning is probably stuff you you don't, you aren't accustomed to thinking about as a basketball team because you, you rarely have the opportunity where you won a game to not win, you don't want to win the game in regulation. Right. And that's that's what they're trying to do here, it looks like. And uh, if you're if you're the Warriors, do you just let the let them score and you still got to win the you want to win the game because right. you got KC Metro who also has a win. Correct. At this juncture, I believe if the game ends as we speak, then PT will move on as the pool winner being 2 and 0. And then HHBA will be the three seed being 0-2. Uh, I believe HHBA has a three-point difference lead over KC Metro, but they have to win this game for that to be a factor. Here comes HHBA, 11 seconds to go. Trailing by one. They're going to take it all the way in. Take the lead by one. 
Inbounds by the Warriors, and they quickly foul. Again, hoping for a free throw miss. If he can only connect on one out of two, then it comes into play that you just got to kill four seconds to get to overtime. If he hits them both, then they've only got four seconds to try to either get the lead and foul quickly again. I mean, it's crazy right now, but let's see what happens. At the line, going to be Alex. Alex Hale. Yeah, that's his uh, first time to the free throw line today. First one is good. He's got one more. He's got to hit this to give his team the lead and potentially win their pool. If he doesn't, the Lightning are going to be content. Oh, and it's tied, and they get the rebound. He puts up a jump shot. No good, and we're going to head to overtime, and this is exactly what the Lightning wanted. You can see him celebrating yep. an overtime. And How often do you see that, Jeremy? Man, that is crazy. So now we're going to go to overtime, and uh, <laughs> the uh, HHBA – has a chance now because now they have four minutes to try to outscore PT by 10 here in overtime to advance. Jeremy, when there was 30 seconds left and, and they kept calling the timeouts and then they, they fouled on purpose, we were confused at first, like what is happening? But it worked. And that's what's surprising is there's so much craziness around the pool play and who advances and who doesn't that even the Warriors seemed a little confused at it. When he missed that free throw, I mean, I think he was trying to hit it, but in some ways it right. looked like he didn't. Right. Unreal. Well, we get an extra period of action here, and because of pool play, not only is a win important, but the margin of victory. So now the Warriors come out, and what they've got to do is either win this game or not lose by more than nine points. Right. And for the Lightning, They've got to win by 10, so that's kind of their only option. We might even get them trying to play for a second overtime, depending on what happens. Yeah. So here we go. Crazy, crazy scenarios. First overtime game of the day here at Drury. We've had a couple close ones, but uh, it was interesting, the strategy that HHBA was playing at the end, but it, it played out in their favor as they got uh, the overtime. And then quickly off of the tip. There's a foul on the Warriors. We got a whistle. And I think they're going to be shooting free throws. That foul is going to be on Aguilar, his third foul. And, and also fouls come into play because we've got Velker down with four. And uh, Lockard has fouled out the game. So he's not even available. But it was pretty much their only shot. And here we go. So at the free throw line, Joseph Wilson trying to do what seemed impossible with less than 30 seconds to go. They were able to get this into overtime, not by trying to win, but by trying to make sure that it was, they didn't score too much and the Warriors didn't score too much. It was right. crazy. They, they tried to keep it at one point and hope somebody missed a layup. Second shot is good. They're two points on their way to where they want to be. They need eight more, more than PT, and they would advance to the number one seed. If you're the Warriors, do you just take the air out of the ball here? Yeah, because if you're PT, you just can't lose by more than nine. It looks like that's kind of what they're going to do. They're trying to just kill some clock, and they're going to have to go back to the foul game again. Yeah. Do they have enough players to be able to keep fouling that time, that was on Levi Kirk, who's in off the bench, and probably for the specific purpose of fouling there. First shot is good. So it looks like with the new free throw rule that the uh, free throw, the foul count carries over into overtime. Yep. It doesn't start over. <clears throat> it's always going to be two now. Second shot is in and out. Tip in. No good by Pike. Tries to get it again. Comes down with it. Great board work by Pike. Here's Aguilar on the drive, stops, pops. He's challenging, puts it in. Well, that's one way to keep it from happening. That foul was going to be on, I didn't see that. Was that 21? Did not see who they called it on. It's really tough to see from this angle. I believe it was 21, but not sure. Shot is no good, and then a foul over the back. That's going to be on Pike. So that's going to send them to the free throw line. <laughs> 
Right now, PT Warriors with a one-point lead. If they can win this game or not lose by more than nine, they win the pool. If, if somehow HHBA is able to win this game by 10 or more, then they win the pool. And, they and then advance. somewhere involved in there, I guess if they win but they don't win by 10, you then KC Metro comes into play at some point, right. depending on the margin of victory. At the free throw line is I believe it, Nolan Bailey. And, and he missed his first free throw. But I do believe if KC Metro, I mean, if uh, HHBA wins this game. Missed them both. By any margin less than 10, that they would finish as the two seed. KC Metro would finish as the three. Ball knocked away there. Velker playing his heart out. He comes away with he's it somehow. Stop shoot three. Oh, you know he's going to do it. A little bit short, though. Didn't quite have the legs on that one. And then on the rebound, a reach-in foul by Joseph Wilson. Yeah, the when you start cramping on the first day of Nationals, that's going to be a long week for you. Yes, sir. That's going to be on 21. I believe that's going to be his fourth foul. The way he's headed towards the bench, it does look that way. And it looks like he's going to empty his bench. HHBA's coach is. And uh, it's a valiant effort. They knew what they had to do. They figured it out quicker than we did. As the first free throw goes by Aguilar, that's his third point of this overtime. Team's well, that, leading by two. So well, that's kind of interesting. The strategy that you had at the end of the game and with three minutes to go, only a three-point, two-point game that you just pulled your starters. And now you're just happy to be the three seed, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure that philosophy. Only other thing I can think of is maybe they're out of gas and they want to have something left tomorrow and they're going to have to put all their chips in on that game. So he hits the other free throw, four points for Aguilar, Isaac Aguilar in this overtime period. And there's a steal. And rather than go in, and take the easy points. Timothy Jones pulls out and gives it back up to Aguilar. Aguilar going to kill some clock here. 2.50 to go. The Lightning bench in. Going to try to get a steal or come up with something if they can. Starter still in for the Warriors. They know that right now within their grasp is this pool play championship of their pool C. The Lightning almost made something crazy happen. They did get it to overtime. Even though it seemed like it couldn't happen. And that was a uh, interesting philosophy to get it to overtime, the way the end of this game went. But uh, here we are with two minutes to go in the overtime. And maybe what the coach for uh, HHBA had decided was, unless things go our way right at the beginning and we got a shot, uh, we're going to have to save our legs for tomorrow. We can't play another period and have to go and play uh, two seed, which is what it looks like they're going to be playing, to have a shot at the play-in to continue on towards right. the championship. But a great effort. And with 144 to go, they pretty much have conceded that that's what's going to happen. And uh, going to let his players get a little extra rest. Warriors going to dribble this out. And they're going to, looks like, going to come away, almost a steal there, come away with a boys 18U Division I Pool C victory. And even though th it did not look their way, and when you think about it, Jeremy, they the, the Lightning had it right where they wanted. They were up by 16 points. Right. And had the opportunity to get that win of 10 or more. And, boy, the Warriors just turned up the defense. And in that fourth quarter, the play by Aguilar, by Pike, they just all really turned it on. Yeah, and that's ended up being the difference. Aguilar really kind of took over in the fourth quarter. And uh, the defensive pressure from Toby Pike. Is, uh, and then I think the legs from HHBA. I mean, you shoot 12 threes in a game. That's a, that takes a lot of energy out of you when you shoot 11 three hours prior in the game before. So that's 23 fouls, 20, 23 three-pointers in two games. Yeah, that gets me tired just thinking about it. Looking over at the Lightning, just deflated and tired over on the sideline, but uh, almost they they understand that there's really not much more they can do. And 
with the foul trouble and everything else, they're just going to kind of pack this one in and hope that they're able to, to re, recharge overnight and be ready to come out and pull off a win tomorrow to continue on in their play. Warriors dribbling it out. That's going to be the final seconds here in overtime. And the Warriors are going to win their pool with a comeback victory after trailing by 16 points in the second half. They win it in overtime, 65-62. We've got more action coming up. Going to be another good one. So we want you to stay and join us if you can. I'll be stepping aside for that one. We'll be back tomorrow. But Jeremy and uh, Paul are going to have the next game. Springfield Rush and the Tyler Heat. What should be another Great game with two teams that have already won today, so they'll be playing for their championship. Right. It's been a great first day. Can't wait until this one uh, continues tonight and then tomorrow. Lots more action. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we will see you on the next one.